Hi guys, today I will show you two easy ways to make jump rings for jewelry making. First way is an easy DIY, something you can do with simple tools at hand. Second is a faster and more efficient way using a special tool for making jump rings, a jump ring maker from Pepe Tools. Let me show you how these work and some very useful tips. To make my jump rings today, I will be using 0.70 mm or 0.80 mm sterling silver wire. I found these sizes to work best in my jewelry making as links for chains and other elements. You can use whatever gauge or metal you need for your project. Next step is to wrap the wire around something round and make a coil. For that, you could use a special tool for coils, but if you don't have any at hand, you can use other round objects that can serve as small mandrels. Here I have a little punch from my doming set, a thin knitting wire, and a paintbrush with the handle that is of even thickness. I also tried this trick with the handpiece for the rotary tool and a little burr attachment. You can use it to make a little coil around the burr mandrel. You might wonder how you will determine the size of your jump rings if you're using random objects to wrap the wire around them. For that you could use the caliper, for example, and measure the size of your DIY mandrel. Note it down so you can remember what size your jump rings are made with this method. Now let me show you how to make these coils. First, I will use the punch to make medium-sized jump rings and I will wrap the 0.70 mm wire around. I've decided to start wrapping by hand, as this first part can be a little tricky, the wire may keep slipping away. But once you get a good grip, you can use nylon pliers to help you keep it in one place while you're wrapping. That's what I did here. I am not making a large coil, as the shorter ones are easier to cut, and that you will see in a second. Next, I will use the H34 dom handpiece and a burr attachment. I believe other brand handpieces with similar mechanisms should work too. Let me know in the comments if you tried it. I've locked the attachments inside, but as you can see it is moving, so I will need to hold the key in place to keep it from spinning. I will now wrap my wire around the bird just like I would around the coil making tool. It's fairly quick and simple and you can make smaller jump rings this way. Okay, now we have some coils, time to cut them into jump rings. Here's my first tip, get yourself some masking tape. You will wrap it around your coil and it will hold everything in one place, especially jump rings after they're cut. For cutting, use the jeweler's saw, you will have perfectly flush edges and no cleaning afterwards. It's tempting to use cutters and shears, as it seems faster, but they will leave your edges uneven. However, if you don't mind the edges, go for the cutters. There are two ways to cut the coil with the saw, like this from the outside, or the one I prefer from the inside when the blade is put through the coil. I find it easier and safer as the blade is not slipping. Some rings may still fall out, but the rest you can take out easily yourself. Be gentle and don't rush when cutting.
The jump rings are finished. Now let me show you another way that's much faster, more precise and efficient. It's a jump ring maker by Pepe Tools. It's a clever tool that allows you to make lots of jump rings within minutes. It consists of a coil maker and 20 mandrels in various sizes, an attachment for for them H30 pan piece, a cutting blade and a coil holder in which the jam rings are being cut. This is how I use this tool. First of all, safety equipment, goggles and a mask are a must. Then I attach the bench vise onto my bench. I will start by making a coil, so I need to place the coil maker in the vise first. Here's my finished coil. I will cut off the excess wire. Now I put the holder in the vise. I make sure it is well placed and secured. For safety reasons, nothing should be moving. Make sure the marking line that indicates how far the coil can reach is further away from you and the stop is closer to you. The next step is to prepare the blade and the handle. First, attach the handpiece onto the flex shaft. The blade will be attached a bit later. First, we need to put the cover over the handpiece. Once it's done, we can secure the blade in the handpiece. Right now, the handpiece is moving, so we need to secure the handpiece and the cover together. Make sure the blade and the line aligns for the proper placement of the blade. Check the fit. Put some Pepe loop on the coil and on the blade. Secure the coil in the holder. We are ready to cut. Use low speed as it's much better and safer. To cut, hold the handpiece firmly and steadily with both hands. Slowly press the pedal of your flex shaft for the power and keep it low. Then slide the cutter towards yourself. Stop the speed as soon as you reach the other side of the holder. Collect the rings and put them in a little container. And that's it! Quick and easy way to make lots of jump rings all at once. Thank you so much Pepe Tools for sponsoring this episode. As always, your support of this channel and community of makers is greatly appreciated. More information and all relevant links and tools will be listed in the description box below this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!